Let's talk about this email one. Uh, you've got a great setup here. We're going to give you guys the setup for the email one here, and then we're going to show you an example of it being used in real time. So go ahead. The value email, that's always the first email in a new thread in your sequence, right? So that's like your initial cold email. But in number one, you're mentioning that that signal, the most highly relevant signal you can find for creating a sequence. Um, that's the first sentence of your email. So calling that out, and because you're putting that in the previous sentence of your email, um, and it's personalized around the signal you found, you're going to have a higher chance of them opening that email. Number two, you're going to describe the pain point that is related to that signal. So whatever signal you found, you want to make a problem hypothesis about what might be going on in the organization and mm. describe that pain point again in the way that the customer would describe it. The third Having a hypothesis is, your, is super powerful. I just want to point that out. Being able yeah. to state a thesis and say, I think this is true. That is of uh, executives specifically respond very favorably to this, right? 100%. Yeah. I mean, if you can show your research in the first sentence and then describe what problem you think might be happening as a, as a result of that research, That's you're right. going to stand out from like 90% of emails. I literally had a conversation today where I was like, I think your buyers live in my, and they were like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it, man. Yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, third one is your value proposition. Um, how you explain how the, the way you solve the problem again should be described in the way that a, a customer would describe that. It's their so language. value proposition. Yeah, their language. You want to make sure it's extremely clear and crisp. Yep. Uh, your call to action, of course. And then number five, that's optional, but I like including some sort of PS with a bonus offer uh, or some of that additional collateral, like a link to a case study, et cetera. Let's take a look at the example. All right, this is it, guys. This is the real, real stuff here. You can use this. So uh, if you want to take a screenshot, we understand. If you're going to share it, make sure you tag us. We love you. <laughs> yeah tag us let's go um now this is just an email example look I, I i create a lot of email examples this is just from the perspective of a recruiting company okay so because i talk about software a lot so this is from a recruiting company example just to kind of mix things up uh but essentially so let's read through the email so hey first name i saw you're opening a new office in city uh you know trigger. are you going to start hiring locally in 2024 that's the signal that's the trigger right and there's a lot of data tools zoom info is a great example where you can pull a big list of companies who are opening new offices, right? So that's the signal. Um, the second one is the problem. So I hear from a lot of talent acquisition teams that they'll post a job on LinkedIn, Indeed, et cetera, and then get flooded with unqualified applicants that they have to spend hours filtering through. So that's the problem, right? The problem hypothesis from the signal of them opening a new office. Um, again, that's in the customer's language. I have talked to a lot of talent acquisition teams. I've worked with staffing companies. These are problems that I hear they have. And so again, that's that's the problem statement. Uh, and then the third one is your value proposition. Um, so if it sounds relevant, we have a number of local applicants for position with experience in their industry. You can watch their custom pitch videos before even deciding to take an interview. That's your value, value proposition. It's very specific. It's personalized. Uh, and then call to action, which would be open to checking it out. And then the PS is that bonus offer we talked about with the collateral that we grab in the first step, the setup step. Here's a short video explaining how it works. I wouldn't personalize that video. I would just create one static 30 second to one minute video that kind of showcases uh, mm. what you do differently from, from other providers. Well, what's a, if you had like a, if you had a guess of like, what's an open rate for that video, you know, like uh, I know everybody's tracking links right now, right? If sure. you're using something to track your links for sure. Everybody's like common sense, right? It's like a non-negotiable in the modern age. So we're tracking links. If I send that to a hundred people cold with this type of email, this, this static video, What's my click rate for something like that in your experience? Obviously some variables, right? Uh, let us know what industry you're selling into in the chat so we can pick a few out, maybe talk about some of that stuff. Yeah, you're absolutely right, James. Like I'm always hesitant to give like just specific averages, but what I've seen from running a, these like video uh, type links across a bunch of different campaigns is it's typically in like the 10 to 20% click rate. But then specifically what I do is that, and there's a lot of sequencing tools that let you do this, is that if you get that click, you send them down a separate sequence path that's a little bit more personalized because you know they took the time to watch the video. So that 10 to 20% yeah. click rate, um, in my opinion, is pretty solid. And if you structure the email right and give them a reason to click on that video, I don't think there's any reason why you can't be in that range or even higher.